This video is about earnings manipulation and fraud. As you know from the media, a lot of bad things happen in accounting. People cheat in their numbers, they do so all the time. A sizable proportion of people are motivated by greed. And good numbers means good compensation, good bonuses and a quick promotion. Hence, if people get the chance, a good number of them would distort the truth for their own benefit. But why do people cheat in accounting? Well, the issue is not about accounting really. Why do people steal telephones, bicycles? Why does pickpocketing and pity crime exist? Even to a larger scale, why people kill? Why there is war, enslave, terrorize? Well, it seems it is part of human nature. It is not only white collar corporate types who cheat. This is part of society's fabric. It is human nature. In this video, we will only focus on financial crimes. Do you remember Enron? Do you remember the big news of the day about 20 years ago? It was a shock. Well, Enron was considered to be one of US's greatest companies, multiple times named America's most innovative company. It was worth 60 billion and had 20,000 employees. A promising company, no? Well, the share price was simply flying and everyone wanted to invest. Well, within a few short months, it went bankrupt. The 60 billion, up in the air, lost. Money that could have been invested into hospitals, childcare, education, other beneficial stuff. It turns out that the CEO and the CFO, hand in hand, were cheating and cheating and manipulating in their numbers. In the end, Enron turned out to be a fraud. Just like in real life, when frauds are caught, they go to jail, companies that cheat often go bankrupt and disappear. Why do people behave unethically? Well, Enron was 20 years ago. Wirecard. Wirecard is the story of today. When we think of Germany and the German people, we think of ethical, hardworking, upright citizens. Well, their largest bank, Wirecard, worth $28 billion and 5,300 employees also turned out to be a fraud. They also disappeared. Glencore, headquartered in Switzerland, one of the safest and richest countries in the world. In November of 2022, it was revealed that they flew cash in bags across Africa, bribing dictators, generals, warlords, politicians, just to get big business contracts. What is the morale of these slides? Well, when you put together large sums of cash, weak controls, strong CEOs and CFOs, and other powerful executives, give them incentives to perform, harsh penalties if targets are not met, then this combination of factors is just like dynamite waiting for a short fuse to be ignited. So why do people cheat? Well, 2008, we had a catastrophic financial crisis, one that almost was going to leave the Western world in total disarray. A lot of it was caused by unethical behavior of top banking executives. But why did the bankers cheat? A lot of investigating was done as to the cause of the crisis. If you listed the CEO of Citibank, one of the world's largest banks, he said, if they are doing it, then how can I not do it? If I don't do it, then my employees will leave and my clients will leave and just, just go somewhere else. An investigation done by a top US law firm, Lubatov and Sucharo, had the following survey. If you could commit fraud and make $10 million and there was no chance of getting caught, would you do it? Well, 24% of bankers said yes. And if you look at the younger group, 38%. The older group, 9%. Does this mean that older people, the old generation, are more ethical? No. <laughs> These people have stolen enough. They do not need to do it any longer. The most fascinating insights for me come from the Barclays investigation. Barclays was the largest British bank at the time, which was bailed out at the time, so it does not go bankrupt. 
their investigation revealed that there was an overemphasis on short-term financial performance reinforced by remuneration systems that tended to reward revenue generation rather than serving the interests of the customers and clients. So now, what is different today? What we have learned from the 2008 crisis, is there still an emphasis on short-term performance? Yes, there is. Nothing has changed. Nothing. All right. Do compensation systems today reward revenue generation? Yes, they do. This is also the same. Now, if we generate revenues for our bank, and if customers are hurt a bit, is that good? Well, it is. Customers are never priority number one for the banks. Although the banks say they are, in reality, they never are. Focusing on customers is good public relations. In reality, having worked with bankers in and out for the last 20 years, I can safely say that revenue generation is focus number one. Keeping customers happy is focus number one. But keeping customers happy and doing what is best for the customers is not the same thing. The trick is keep customers happy while taking the money from their pockets and putting it into the bankers' pockets. So earnings manipulation comes in different flavors and levels of legality. Academically, we recognize three distinct components. Real earnings management would be where managers manipulate operations to obtain certain numbers. Wood example is when a CEO needs to inflate earnings and does so by selling a prized asset at a gain. This is not good business. It is bad for shareholders and a breach of a CEO's fiduciary duty towards stakeholders. Certainly selling a factory or a building or a business division at a gain that goes on the income statement is good for the CEO. But is it good for everyone else? This is not illegal. Nothing stops a CEO from doing bad business decisions. Every CEO does bad business decisions. Selling a prized asset at a gain is not illegal, but is certainly bad for shareholders. Next, next comes accrual earnings management. This is where a CEO needs to inflate earnings and does so using accounting tricks. The best example is that if a CEO normally puts a bad debt expense of 5% from credit sales, now decides to put a bad debt expense of 3%. This can justify this by saying economic conditions in the country are improving or that they have implemented a credit granting system with the help of McKinsey, that they are the best consultants in the world and they can turn any business around. So lowering the expectation on bad debt expense increases your income. Now, the main hurdle is that the auditors do not approve such a change. If the auditors approve, then nothing stands between the CEO and overly optimistic and inflated earnings numbers. Auditors have a weak hand when they negotiate with the CEO, when it comes to predictions about the future. And bad debt expense is certainly something that relates to the future. So if a CEO wants to inflate earnings by a few percentage points, by manipulating bad debt expense, the chances are high that they can get away with it. Is this legal? Well, yes and no. It is certainly not legal to manipulate accounting numbers. It is also not legal to do something with the intention to manipulate. However, lawyers have a hard time prosecuting this in court because this is a civil case and not a criminal case. They have to demonstrate intent and this is hard to do. Accrual earnings manipulation is borderline legal. It is rarely prosecuted and only in the worst of cases leads to sanctions and fines. Finally, we have fraudulent accounting meaning we create numbers that do not exist and have no reason to exist. This normally involves creating fake paperwork to support the fake numbers. This is very different from accrual earnings management discussed before. Accrual earnings management means that we are changing assumptions underlying accounting numbers. Here, we are not changing assumptions. We are simply creating numbers. 
This happens often and normally leads to prosecutions, sometimes jail, often too big fines and sanctions. The best examples are MCI WorldCom, the world's largest telephone company at the time. They created invoices and fictitious sales that did not exist. Wirecard created fictitious Asian business that did not exist. Enron is another example. Contracts were maintained as revenue generating, where in fact contracts with clients had already been terminated. These type of manipulations constitute fraud and are illegal and lead to severe prosecutions. Bernie Ebers, the CEO of WorldCom, went to jail 12 years. Andrew Fasto, the CFO of Enron, went to jail for 10 years. Marcus Brown, the CEO of Wirecard, is in jail and is awaiting the trial date.